Okay, this is a very rough and unscripted overview of a demo I have here for TD Ableton. And um, this will not be covering installation of TD Ableton for Touch Designer. Uh, for that, I would just reference you to the derivative website. And I would encourage you that if you run into issues, uh, your persistence will be rewarded. Um, there are a few gotchas here and there with different versions, but um, I have this working pretty well here with version 1.30b, and I just wanted to do a quick demonstration here. So I've got an Ableton project that has four tracks, and what I'm going to do is have all four of these assigned to different actions over here with this graphic on the far right. And if we look at track one, when I turn track one um, from mute to on, we're going to hear that and we'll see that the square lights up here and changes color. Now, what's happening there? There's actually two things that's happening there. Um, the first thing is that um, Ableton is sending that data over, or rather Touch Designer is listening for that data and uh, looking for that first track here. And I am harnessing the track activator option here to push that value over onto this device on. So that's how I'm able to um, just get this when I want to turn this on. If I didn't do that, uh, as you can see here, there's data. This data is continuing to, to come through even though we're not hearing anything. So I need a way to tell this level component here that I want this device to be on. So that's the first thing I'm doing there. <coughs> uh, the second thing that's happening is the data that's coming across, which is essentially just left-right level data, is being split into frequency bands here. And then I'm taking those and I'm putting them through an average RMS process here just to get some values. Um, since we've got stereo values here, I'm getting that down to a mono signal basically. And uh, that's what's coming over to impact the color of our fill of our square. So then using a very similar process for these others, We'll see we have the second track here, and by the way, these are all just stock loops. These are not tracks I recorded, and they are not musically relevant. It's just for this demo here. Um, the second track here is going to be just the border of the circle, or in this case, the square. So we put those together. And again, I'm just mapping uh, high, mid, low to RGB values. That's all I'm doing, which may or may not make sense for some things. But it's just to show the demonstration of data coming over. And then the third one here is impacting the background RGB of our background here. This fourth track is doing something a little different. The fourth one here uh, comes over the same. It's still turning on. Uh, the activation of the track is still turning on this component so that I can pass the value through. Um, but then I'm mapping those high, mid, low values to some values within this ramp. So I'm changing the phase and the period. I'm only using two of those values, I guess, here. The low and the mid. So that is an example of how this would work using um, TD Ableton to assign discrete data from discrete instrument tracks to specific graphical elements. And uh, so let's put the whole thing together here. So 
There's our inner square, our border, our background, and then our circles. Now, of course, you'd want this to probably be scripted a little bit more over the course of the song, and there's a lot of other capabilities here. Um, I'm only doing basically one-way communication from Ableton over to Touch Designer. Uh, you could also do two-way communication, uh, but I find um, at that point things start to get even more complicated, and uh, unless you're going to spend a lot of time on a single track, it's, um, it's very time-consuming to set it all up. So if you have time for that, great. Um, I've enjoyed putting this together. If uh, you want to learn more about this sort of thing or want to chat, let me know. And uh, have a good one. Catch you later.